Uh, we move on to the last presentation. Uh, will be presented by uh, Dr. Philippe Marin from Villeneuve Saint Denis in France. Is the Pope two studies? The second study actually addressed in evaluating called Kaisin for postoperative pericardial diffusion. The postoperative pericardial diffusion study, a multicenter double blind randomized trial. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present the results of the Pope II study on behalf of the French Society of Cardiology. Our objective was to test the effectiveness of colchicine in treating post-operative pericardial effusions. Actually, what do we fear concerning pericardium after cardiac surgery? We fear cardiac tamponade because cardiac tamponade is a very brutal life-threatening complication. And if we analyze the evolution of pericardial complications, we can divide the follow-up in two phases. There is a first phase, which represents the first post-operative week. And during this period, most patients have pericardial effusion. A few of them will develop cardiac tamponade, about 1%. But as the patient is still hospitalized in cardiac surgery, the diagnosis is easily made and the treatment pericardial drainage is done. Things are different during the second phase after the post-operative, the first post-operative week after day seven because the patient is no longer hospitalized in cardiac surgery, is at home or in a cardiac rehabilitation center. That's the reason why we decided to focus on the second phase. Here are my, my disclosures, my conflicts of interest. After this uh, seven post-operative day, two very different pericardial complications can develop. There is the PPS, post-pericardiotomy syndrome. PPS is an inflammatory disease. This is a, what we call a post-injury syndrome. This is a pericarditis. A patient with PPS has symptoms, chest pain, fever. He has a friction rub, but he has no or a very small effusion, and therefore a very small risk of cardiac tamponade developing. In contrast, a patient with a POPE, a post-operative pericardial effusion, has no symptom, no chest pain, no fever, he has no friction rub, but as the effusion can be medium-sized or large, then the risk of cardiac tamponade developing is high, about 10% within two weeks. So we thought that POPEs are much more tricky than PPS, and we decided to try to find a treatment to treat these POPEs. And we decided to try to uh, test colchicine because several studies have shown that colchicine is effective in treating acute pericarditis and even in treating the other postoperative disease, PPS. And we conducted a very classical multicenter randomized double-blind placebo control study, study in 10 centers. We included 197 patients at high risk of tamponade after cardiac surgery, and these patients received for 14 days either colchicine or a placebo after randomization. The dose of colchicine was very usual. We decided to include only patients with a persistent pericardial effusion more than seven days after surgery, and, with, and we excluded patients with no or very small effusion because from previous studies, we knew that patients with no or very small persisting effusion has no risk of cardiac tamponade developing. Then we included only patients with moderate, medium, or large persisting pericardial effusion, grade two, three, or four. We screened more than 8,000 consecutive patients at admission in the cardiac rehabilitation centers. Among them, 252 met the inclusion criteria. They were at high risk of cardiac tamponade because they had a persisting pericardial effusion of grade 2, 3, or 4. And finally, 197 patients were included and randomized to receive colchicine or a placebo. And here is the result of the study. Our main endpoint was what we called the mean pericardial effusion grade in each group. In fact, we evaluated semi-quantitatively the volume of the effusions at the beginning and at the end of the study, 
in the colchicine and the placebo group. And you can see that in the two groups, volume decrease, volume effusion decrease was very similar, minus 1.1 grade in the placebo group, minus 1.3 grade in the colchicine group, P equal to 0.23. Among our pre-specified secondary endpoints, I chose to show you the number of tamponade during the study, and you can see that this secondary endpoint confirm the results of the primary endpoint. There is no decrease in cardiac tamponade during this, the duration of the study. We also analyzed, as did Dr. Imezio, the number of atrial fibrillation, and we didn't observe, and it was also a pre-specified endpoint, and we didn't observe any decrease in atrial fibrillation. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, what do we add? Firstly, we confirm that to have a persisting pericardial effusion more than seven days after cardiac surgery is a severe condition. Indeed, 6.6% .6 of these patients will develop a life-threatening cardiac tamponade within two weeks, and another 5% will require pericardial drainage within six months. And colchicine administration seems to be useless, and I, can, I dare to remind you that NSAID administration is also useless. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, so the last four presentations are open for uh, questions, but let me remind you first that there are uh, a specific e European Society of Cardiology spokesperson available for your questions if you want to have independent comments at the end. So.